Hello everybody, so today we are going to talk about vesicular transport. So we talked about transport in class and it's basically the process of transport through the nuclear pores or pro how proteins made in the cytosol can go into the nucleus and also some proteins can also come out of the nucleus. It's also transport across membranes where proteins made in the cytosol can transport into the chloroplasts, the mitochondria, the peroxisome, and the endoplasmic reticulum. But today we're going to talk about vesicular transport or transport through uh, the vesicles. So what is vesicular transport? Well, it's when the transport vesicles carrying some kind of cargo bud off from one compartment and fuse with another transferring the cargo from one cellular compartment to another cellular compartment. There are basically two processes, exocytosis by which the cell releases cargo and endocytosis through which the cell uptakes the cargo. So all the processes between endocytosis and exocytosis are basically vesicular transport. So today we'll be talking mainly about endocytosis and endocytosis through clathrin coded vesicles. So basically clathrin coded vesicles carry a cargo into the cell. So endocytosis occurs through complexes of clathrin which form a basket and what they do is they basically form vesicles and help the vesicles to pinch off from the membrane. Clathrin itself has a triskelion structure, sort of like a tri-legged structure. So the ones in pink or magenta are the heavy chains, so there are three heavy chains, and there are three light chains. And this triskelion structure assembles into a basket. So here you can see one triskelion, this is another triskelion, so on so, and so forth. And they basically form sort of like a soccer ball structure. And this vesicle carries cargo from the plasma membrane. The clathrin coated vesicles are basically made of alpha helices. So the clathrin is composed of a number of alpha helices. So one leg of clathrin contains seven of these 10 helix repeats. Now let's talk about the assembly and disassembly of the clathrin coat. So here you can see the cargo molecules in red bind to the transmembrane cargo receptor. So this is the outside of the cell and this is the inside. So cargo from the outside binds to the transmembrane cargo receptors and the cytoplasmic domain of these receptors bind to a protein called adaptin, shown in light green, which then recruits the clathrin. So the clathrin here is shown in dark green. And then the clathrin actually keeps on binding to these receptors to form a cluster. And as they form the cluster, they induce a curvature to the membrane and eventually will form a clathrin coated pit. So here you can see that this vesicle contains the cargo, the receptors, and then you can see the clathrin coat on the outside. So as the additional clathrin molecules bind, they increase the curvature of the vesicle. Now this vesicle needs to be pinched off. How does this get pinched off? Well, there's a protein called dynamin. And dynamin assembles a ring around each clathrin coated pit or vesicle. And what happens is that this ring constricts to pinch the membrane off. Dynamin is actually GTPase and uses the energy released from GTP hydrolysis to power this re reaction. Therefore, the pinching off of vesicles is an energy dependent process. Now, this vesicle needs to shed 
its clathrin code. So here a protein called heat shock protein 70 functions as the uncoating ATPase to peel off the clathrin coat. And after the clathrin coat has been peeled off, the vesicles are then transported to their destination. And how does this transport occur? Well, they just don't float through the cell. They actually uh, move along uh, highways. So here you can see the, ve the vesicles, or actually you can actually see the microtubular highways, and here you can see the vesicles attached to proteins called dynin and kinasin that basically walk along the microtubule and carry the vesicles, and obviously the vesicles contain the cargo.